Okay. Um, LCDR, RF uh, link checks are complete and satisfactory. All right, copy. And SYS, you can enable alarms and average limits and report complete. Copy. Alarms active. Copy, as far as. This is Delta Launch Control at T-minus 15 minutes, 7 seconds and counting. Preparing now to go into the 20-minute built-in hold in 3, 2, 1. T-minus 15, 15 minutes and holding. This is a 20-minute built-in hold. Timer, verify the sequencer is holding. Verify. Sequencer at the end of the built-in hold. Start the sequencer. Roger. Cycling lock tank then. The Dawn spacecraft weighs 2,684 pounds at launch. When the solar rays are deployed, the spacecraft will be more than 65 feet long, tip to tip. The spacecraft has three ion thrusters that are fueled using xenon propellant to provide a gradual increase in acceleration. The spacecraft's acceleration when using the ion propulsion system is 0 to 60 miles per hour in four days. However, over the six years that the ion propulsion system will be providing thrust, the spacecraft will gradually be increasing in speed to more than 24,000 miles per hour faster than what it was at the time that it separated from the Delta II rocket, almost twice its original velocity. Most of the communications channels here in the Mission Director Center are relatively quiet right now, and that's always a good sign when you get into the built-in hole with not much activity. That means there's not uh, much to catch up on or any uh, engineering issues that they're working. We'll look now at some animation of what the Delta II will be doing once we get to launch here in about an hour from now. This uh, is on launch pad 17B where the Delta II heavy vehicle is uh, awaiting its liftoff with the gantry railing mobile service tower retracted. Launch service being provided to NASA by the United Launch Alliance. Liftoff of the Delta II. It will go through the sound barrier approximately 30 seconds after liftoff, which time the Jupiter Inlet Tracking Station will also begin acquiring. It will go through maximum dynamic pressure 39 seconds after liftoff. 
And then a minute 20 into the flight, the six ground-lit solid rocket boosters will separate, and then the three air-lit solids will ignite. Have the main engine cutoff occur four minutes and 22 seconds after launch. It will fall away. And for the second stage beginning to burn, we'll be getting data through the Antigua Island station. Fairing jettisons, four minutes, 41 seconds after liftoff. And the second stage continues to burn until eight minutes, 58 seconds into the mission, at which time it will cut off. And we go into a 42-minute coast phase. We'll have contact through the Dongara station. The second stage will restart. Tenant Creek acquires, the second stage cuts off, and the third stage ignites after spin-up and separation from the second stage. The spacecraft then separates after burnout of the third stage, and we'll be getting data through the Kwajalein Island station. It's the completion of the third stage burn the yo-yo D-spin before we get separation of the spacecraft from the third stage. Third stage separates. And at that point, the solar rays begin to deploy as dawn heads toward the asteroid Vesta. At T-minus 15 minutes and holding, this is Delta Launch Control. Second one of the vehicle locks tank vents.
This is Delta Launch Control at T minus 15 minutes in holding. We're approximately halfway through our 20 minute plan built in hold. The Dawn spacecraft will make an eight year journey to the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter using ion propulsion engines. Dawn's destination is the asteroid Vesta and the dwarf planet Ceres in an effort to significantly increase our understanding of the conditions and processes that formed our solar system during its earliest era. Evidence shows that Vesta and Ceres have distinct but very different characteristics and therefore for some reason must have followed very different evolutionary paths. By observing both using the same set of instruments, Scientists hope to develop an understanding of the transition from the rocky characteristics for which the asteroid Vesta is known to the evolutionary icy, almost snowball characteristics of a dwarf planet for which Ceres is representative. The spacecraft has the largest solar arrays that have been flown in space. They're almost uh, 65 feet from tip to tip and will be very important once they reach deep space around the asteroid series. At T-minus 15 minutes and holding, this is Delta Launch Control. LCDR, RC on one. Go ahead, RC. Roger, are we uh, free to let that tell four from, relieve tell four from our telemetry link checks? Yeah, link checks are complete. Okay. Copy.
This is Delta Launch Control at T minus 15 minutes and holding. L minus 30 minutes. Have approximately five minutes remaining in this planned built in hold. This is the LCDR on Channel 1. Following personnel, report ready to proceed with the countdown. ATC? Ready. ATC 2. Ready. ATC 3. Ready. EEA. Ready. ESYS. Ready. FMA. Ready. FSC. Ready. GE. Ready. HYE. Ready. MEA. Ready. FCO. Ready. OSM. Ready. TEA. Ready. Prop 1. Ready. Prop 2. Ready. RC. Ready. NSC. Ready. RCO. Ready. SSC. Ready. SSP. Ready. SYS. Ready. TM1. Ready. TM2. Ready. VE. Ready. VP. Ready. VSE. Ready. MCE. Ready. And launch director. Ready. Here are our polls of the launch team for their readiness to come out of this stand, standard uh, planned 20 minute to built in hold, which will count us down to T minus 4 minutes, in which time we'll enter another 10 minute hold. Three minutes remaining in this planned built in hold now. And we'll be getting one final update on the weather, but uh, right now the radar looks pretty good. Most of the rain shower activities about 40 miles off to the southeast downrange. The Delta II rocket, when it lifts off, will be moving downrange on an azimuth of 93 degrees almost a straight easterly direction. The rocket as we see it there weighs 629,500 pounds and we can just see the first uh, traces of dawn beginning to come up over the uh, eastern horizon, the first rays of sunlight. up in about 90 seconds. Stand by for release of the hold. Coming out of the hole now in 10 seconds, standing by now to uh, 
hear from the lost conductor that the countdown has resumed. T minus 15 minutes and counting. SSP. Top off second stage helium and nitrogen system pressures prior to end of last built in hole. Roger. SSP, report second stage oxidizer tank pressure. 173 decimal 2. 173 decimal 2. SSP, report second stage fuel tank pressure. 133 decimal 2. 133 decimal 2. SSP, report second stage helium and nitrogen pressurizations are normal. Normal. SSP, verify second stage helium regulator lockup pressures are go. Go. SSP, verify second stage nitrogen regulator lockup pressures are go. Go. In HYE, verify first and second stage hydraulics are go. Go. DST, verify RF link checks are complete. Complete. LCDR countdown limit, con limit conditions T minus 15 minutes to on. On. GE, perform T4 and T60 limit checks on the backup TFE. Report complete on channel 5. Roger. T minus 12 minutes. SSE, third stage power enable on. On. SSE, establish NCS test output off. Off. SSE, third stage TM system external power to on. On. SSE, report third stage system external current. Zero decimal. Seven five zero decimal seven five SSE third stage TM transmitter external power on on SSE report third stage transmitter external current one decimal three zero one decimal three zero SSE report third stage TM base plate temperature sixty decimal seven six zero decimal seven TM two obtained third stage TM data trend Roger. We're looking at a shot of the launch vehicle data center where the NASA engineering team is evaluating the state of health and readiness for launch of the Delta II vehicle. This is uh, co-located adjacent to the mission director center.
T-minus 10 minutes. MC, report the load relief checksum number. Load relief checksum for today's op is 1 Echo 6 Echo. 1 Echo 6 Echo. FMA QAM perform the load relief wind data loading per task 3B. Use channel 6 and report complete on channel 5. FMA copies checksum 1 Echo 6 Echo. ACC report fairing inlet temp. 5-4, RCO, report vehicle beacon go on external power. Hmm. Right now, beacon go. Prop 1, verify engine regulator go. Go. Prop 1, report engine section temp. 96 decimal 6. Copy. Prop 1, report lube line temp. 67.4. Copy. Prop 1, verify booster helium nitrogen pressures within limits prior to end of the built-in hold. Roger, within limits. Prop 1, establish vehicle fuel tank vent is closed. Closed. Prop 1, vehicle fuel tank press open, pressurize tank 24 to 30 PSIG, and then perform steps A through delta. Pressurizing. This is the Delta Operations Building. This is where the United Launch Alliance and Air Force teams are sitting in control of the countdown this morning. This is actually where, from where the command will be sent to send the ignition signal to the Delta II rocket, which occurs at T-minus two and a half seconds before launch. This team is in direct control of the vehicle from this location and all of the systems at launch pad 17B. Open. Open. Prop 2, verify locks and biblical perch closed. Verified. PTO, verify FABU and engine heaters are go. Go. And PTO, verify overflow line temp rise is less than 12 degrees. Less than 12. T-minus seven minutes. SSC, perform third stage internal transfer. Active. Complete. Prop one, report locks, relief plenum pressure. Eight decimal four. Copy. Prop one, report locks, relief plenum temperature. 68 decimal five. Copy. Prop two, verify VE locks bleeds and lock start tanker venting. Verified. Prop 2, top locks to 100%, verify 100% lock float switch operation one time. Roger. Prop 2, allow to boil off, maintain locks level between 99 and 100%, report when complete. Roger. ATC2, pressurized facility water tanks. Pressurizing. TM2, report internal Batmon volts. 31.8. Copy. TM2, report TM Batmon volts. 32.1. Copy. TM2, obtain third stage internal data trend. Roger. LWO, verify area weather conditions are go for launch. LWO, Channel 1. LWO, go ahead. Verify area weather conditions are go for launch. Roger, conditions are go.
Going now into the uh, built-in hole in about five minutes. one minute. SSE We're at T-minus five minutes in county. Transfer. We've had uh, confirmation that the launch area weather conditions are go for launch. Complete. OSM, launch enable closed. Closed. Prop 1, launch enable on. On. SSP, launch enable on. On. ATC 3, launch enable on. On. SIS, verify no record on change list are activated. Verified. Timer at T4, verify the sequencer is holding. Roger. Standing by to go under the hold in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. T minus, T minus four minutes, four minutes, in, minutes in holding. Minute built in this hold. is a planned 10 minute built in hold. The built in hold, restart the sequencer. Roger. PEA, report ready to enable first and second stage T minus four minute limits. We're ready for limits. Prop two, activate and display record on change list for engine start. Good work. Complete. And prop two cycle locks fill and drain valve closed, then open three times. Verify proper response and leave open. Report when complete. Roger. L minus thirteen minutes. NSC requests spacecraft to configure for launch. Roger. LCDR Prop 2, Channel 1. Go ahead. Fill and drain has been cycled three times, operation nominal. Copy, and uh, Prop 2, you can cancel display and deactivate record on change list. And work. ATC 3, report the amp hours remaining for the following. For CRD 1 battery remaining prior to F1. Please record one decimal three seven. One decimal three seven. Usage zero decimal zero one. Zero decimal And for launch. One decimal three six. One decimal three six. CRD two prior to F one. One decimal three seven. One U decimal three seven. Usage zero decimal zero one. Zero decimal zero one. And for launch. One decimal three six. And LCDR Prop 2, Channel 1. Go ahead. Okay, during our functional uh, top off to 100%, the 99% B load switch is not operational. It's been reported on Channel 5, and it is not needed for launch. Both 100% are working. All right, copy. Thank you. This is the NLM on the NLM net with our ready to proceed with terminal count and final launch pulled. Uh, currently the range is green and all parties are uh, reporting that uh, all the support is green. And with that I'd like to pull the team, NASA CE. NASA CE go. NASA MEM. NASA MEM go. SMA. SMA go. SMD. SMDs go. Beware we will be transitioning to internal power in five minutes. Copy that. And NAM. That's advisor teams ready. Very good. S teams ready.
We're halfway through the 10-minute build and hold. We heard NASA Launch Director Omar Baez uh, give a go to uh, continue, and he'll be discussing a final readiness with United Launch Alliance Mission Director Rich Murphy. Ready. ATC-2. Ready. ATC-3. Ready. EEA. Ready. ESYS. Ready. FMA. Ready. SYS. Ready. TM-1. Ready. TM-2. Ready. MEA. Ready. PEA. Ready. Prop 1. Ready. RCO. Ready. FCO. Ready. Prop 2. Ready. PTO. Ready. RC. Ready. SSC. Ready. SSP. Ready. FSC. Ready. PE. Ready. HYE. Ready. VE. Ready. VP. Ready. VSE. Ready. SEM. Ready. OSM. Ready. LWO. Ready. NSC. Ready. MCE. Ready. And Launch Director. Ready. Folks launch securing will be conducted on Channel 5. Flight data will be reported real time on Channel 2. Following personnel, switch to Channel 5 after liftoff is confirmed for pad securing. LCDR, Prop 1, ATC 2, Prop 2, SSP, OSM, SSC, Talker, FSC, and ATC 3. All personnel, if a condition that exceeds a launch constraint is observed during the final four minutes, the observer shall call a hold on the launch ops net channel 1 as directed by the console operator's memo. There are no expected or allowable alarms at the T minus 60 seconds. All personnel remain on channel 1 until after launch. In the event of a hold after T minus 4 minutes, recycle steps will begin in Appendix K, Appendix K of the yellow pages. To prevent the possibility of a hang fire, personnel with the launch enable switches are instructed not to switch launch enable off after T minus 4 seconds. In case of an engine cutoff or no vehicle liftoff by T plus 5 seconds, recycle and saving will be performed per Appendix L. Appendix L are the red pages. SSC, calibrate third stage telemetry two minutes prior to picking up the count. Roger. We are approximately two minutes away from coming out of this final built-in hole at T minus four. Sequencer, CLCDR, channel one, do not release the hold. Copy. All personnel monitoring channel one, this is CLCDR. At this time, we have a fouled range, no other information. Please stand by, monitor your systems, and wait for a new T0. That means the range is no go, probably due to a boat or a ship offshore, or possibly an aircraft.
NSC, CLCDR on channel 1. NSC, CLCDR on channel 1. This is NSC, go ahead. Please requ request spacecraft transfer back external. Copy. Appears that the issue is a ship in the area where the solid rocket boosters would be dropping off the Delta II. It will be about uh, five minutes before we get a status on that. And uh, we do have a uh, collision avoidance cutout. The uh, Coast Guard has made contact with the ship. We do have a uh, collision avoidance uh, cutout uh, between 734 or 727 and 734. So we're looking uh, right now at uh, possibly a 727 liftoff, but that has not been decided. Again, the issue is a ship in the area where the solid rocket boosters will be jettisoned. The Coast Guard has been successful in contacting the vessel and we'll be getting an update in about five minutes. Coast Guard reports that the ship should be out of the area by 7.25. And new launch time is under discussion. Continue to hold at T minus four minutes. The new launch time is going to be planned for 7.34, that is right after the end of our collision avoidance cutout. And we'll also give the ship plenty of time to clear the hazard box. So we'll come out of the Plan built in hold at exactly 7.30, proceeding toward a 7.34 Sequencer, CLCDR on channel 1. Se sequencer, please reset 
sequencer for new T0, 1134 Zulu. Picking up at T-4 at 1130 Zulu. Copy. NASA Launch Manager Omar Baez has pulled his team for readiness to pick up, and everyone, including the Dawn spacecraft, will be ready to come out of the hold when we begin counting once again at uh, 7.30, once we have confirmation from the rain safety team that uh, the ship has cleared the box, the uh, danger drop box. And the ship was in an area where the uh, solid rocket boosters would be falling. CDR sequencer on one. Go ahead, sequencer. Time is set. Copy, thank you. And SSC, do you need to perform another third stage calibration? That's active. And you could do that, you know, two minutes before we pick up the count. Copy. We have confirmation that the ship has cleared the box. Rain safety confirms that the range is green. So we will be picking up at uh, 7.30. Right now we are just going into that uh, COLA, that uh, collision avoidance uh, cutout. That is uh, actually for the International Space Station that uh, is going through our, our uh, 
plane of launch. So uh, we will be prepared to launch uh, as soon as the International Space Station clears, and that is at uh, 7.34. We'll get a final go for launch uh, from um, NASA Launch Director Omar Baez three minutes before liftoff. That will come at the same time that the uh, spacecraft goes to internal power and the uh, mission director for United Launch Alliance, Mitch Rich Murphy, also confirms to the uh, launch conductor to proceed with the terminal count. You have to count in two minutes. And we have been given a clearance by the mission director to pick up the count at 730. Now to Launch Alliance uh, mission director Rich Murphy passing that word to the uh, launch team in the Delta Operations Building. Rich Murphy here in the uh, Mission Director Center. And again, Omar Baez will give his count go for NASA five, and the spacecraft at uh, three minutes. CLCDR, proceed the terminal count at the end of the built-in hold. Roger. CLCDR, verify water pressure is 125 plus or minus 25 PSIJ. Verified. FMA, word latch on. On. LCDR, establish countdown limit conditions. T minus four minutes are on. On. Load relief, verified. Stand by for release of the hold. Coming out of the hold now in 10 seconds. Releasing the hold in 5, 4, Three, two, one. T minus, T -minus four, four minutes and counting. and counting. SSC perform vehicle internal transfer. Active. TM12 internal. Dawn is on internal, internal, internal power and configured for launch. Vehicle internal. TM12 internal. Control 1 and 2 internal. Complete. SSC perform vehicle arm. Active. SNA 1 and 2 arm. Or 1 and 2 arm. Or 1 and 2 arm. Second stage. Complete. SSC perform third stage internal transfer. Active. Complete. OSM. Solid motor SNA arm permit to close. Closed. FSE. Solid motor ignition. T minus three minutes. Arm. Arm. NASA launch director Omar Baez has given his go for launch. And Kira Patel, OSM, the Dawn project manager, has AR given the Dawn spacecraft go for launch. Closed. SSC, third stage SNA arm. Arm on. Drop one. Vehicle fuel tank press open. Open. Fuel umbilical purge open. Open. FSE, bat one heater control exit. Exit. 
Bat 2, heat of control, exit. Exit. NSC, report spacecraft is go. Don is go. T-minus two minutes and counting. SSC, FTS bat one heater and bat heaters one, two off. Off. Prop one, pressurized first stage locks tank to relief. Final permission to launch has been given. Weather is good. Topping at 100%. Topping liquid oxygen now to 100%. 90 seconds. SSE, hydraulic external power on. On external. 80 seconds. RCO, report ranges go for launch. Ranges go. CLC at ARU are go for launch. Roger. 70 seconds. SSE, hydraulic internal. On internal. T minus one minute. One minute to launch. Air countdown limit conditions. T minus sixty seconds. On. On. One hundred percent lock. Forty-five seconds. CLCDR seventeen B launch and able to flight. Flight. ATC three main power disable on. On. Thirty-five seconds. Hydraulics go. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 13, 12, green status board. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, main engine start, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Dawn using ion propulsion to reach the catalysts of our solar system. The kick rate came in on time. T plus 25 seconds. The vehicle has worked its way nicely out of the transients of liftoff. Coming up on Mach correction, uh, Mach 1, we've exceeded the speed of sound, and coming up on Max Q. Vehicle is now 3 miles altitude, downrange distance 12 miles, with a velocity of over 1600 miles per hour. To telemetry manager Mark Levine. Both furniers in the main engine chamber pressure still looking good. We're reaching solid motor burnout, the first six motors. And burnout confirmed. Jettison. Solid motor jettison. And we've ignited the air start motors. Air start motor chamber pressure looking good, all burning symmetrically. Both burners and the main engine continue to burn well. Very good chamber pressures there. And we see the usual disturbances at solid motor jettison. Vehicle has recovered well. And we are now 19 miles altitude, 44 miles downrange, and four thousand miles per hour. Air start solid motors continue to burn well. Our next event will be a burnout. Solid motor burnout.
and jettison all three air start solid motors have jettisoned and our LOX tank bi-level relief reset did come in on time. I can confirm a greater LOX tank pressure. Now passing T plus 190 seconds. And uh, stage one guidance also came in on time. And the uh, vehicle uh, has recovered well from the air start solid motor jettison. The vehicle is now passing an altitude of 52 miles, downrange distance 207 miles, and a velocity just passing 97 100 miles per hour, and we can confirm the vehicle is tracking down the center of the range corridor. Coming up on T plus 235 seconds. Our next event will be a MECO enable, and right now both Berniers and the main engine continue to perform well. See nice stable combustion chamber pressure. Vehicle body rates are nominal. We have our float switches and we have enabled Miko. Miko confirmed, both Bernier, Bernier is still burning well. Miko. Main engine cut off. Stages have separated, and ignition, stage two ignition. And we have a fairing unlatch and jettison. Data looking very good coming from uh, JD. Our uh, second stage chamber pressure is solid, and we see no helium reg oscillations at uh, ignition. Looks like we're in a steady state burn mode for second stage. Vehicle is now 80 miles altitude, 538 miles downrange distance, and a velocity coming up on 14,500 miles per hour. Data coming from Jupiter Inlet and from the station here at the Cape Tel 4. Vehicle is now 87 miles altitude, downrange distance 650 miles, and a velocity. 14,800 miles per hour. Second. We have a liftoff time of the first stage of 11 hours, 34 minutes, 00, zero decimal 372 seconds. And uh, data now coming through the Antigua Island tracking station in the Bahamas, the second stage burn data. Now passing T plus 390 seconds. Vehicle telemetry is still looking very clean. And we have we have just switched to Antigua data. So we're now LOS. Um, LOS from Tel4 and JD. Thanks for the ride. Coming up on T plus 420 seconds. Vehicle now. 97 miles altitude, 908 downrange distance miles, and a velocity of 15,500 miles per hour. Data looking very clean. Second stage engine performance looking very good. We have a solid chamber pressure. 
Hydraulic system and return pressure looking good. And once again, very clean data from Antigua as the vehicle continues its ascent upstairs to orbit. Passing T plus 490 seconds. Second stage continues to perform well. We're looking at uh, good body rates, normal chamber pressure, and we're now passing 102 nautical miles altitude. Getting pretty close to orbital velocity. And our next event will be a nominal SECO coming up in less than 15 seconds. We've reached uh, the second stage helium reg blowdown phase of operation and looking for a, a SECO. SECO. Hydraulic pump has shut down. Bleed down is complete. Both CRDs remain on. They will be commanded off next. We show a good SECO, and uh, I don't have the exact time, but it looks like a few seconds longer than the expected uh, predict. Still looking very, at very clean data from Antigua. And we see a normal reaction to SECO on the vehicle body rates. CRD shut down. Came in on time. Second stage is now settling down to a normal coast state, and we have our SECO uh, one orbit pages available now. The height of apogee was 100.06 nautical miles. Perigee is 99.99, and our inclination 28.6. Can't get better than that. So I can confirm Dawn has made it to orbit. We're reaching the end of coverage from Antigua, and uh, data was looking very clean. And we are now LOS from Antigua. Thanks for the ride. We have a coverage gap in telemetry at this time for uh, about another 39 minutes, after, after which uh, the vehicle will sail around the world and TM live coverage will continue. So the Delta II rocket is now in a parking orbit in a coast phase. It's uh, out over the middle of the Atlantic Ocean right now, as we can see. And it will eventually approach the uh, coast of Africa, moving 
southeasterly, and uh, we will not be in communication with it again until it approaches the west coast of Australia when we will have contract through the Dongara tracking station. And now we're going to be looking at some of the replays of the Delta II and it's left off with the Dawn spacecraft.
This is Delta Launch Control at 27 minutes, 35 seconds into the mission of the Dawn spacecraft aboard the Delta II rocket. As we can see, the uh, Delta II is just crossing the southwest coast of Africa, and it will continue until reaching the uh, Indian Ocean, and at that point it will begin to uh, turn more toward the uh, northeast as it uh, makes an approach to the northeastern coast of Australia. And we will make contact with it for the second stage burn through the Dongara tracking station about five minutes after that. We'll be getting uh, contact through Tennant Creek as well in north central Australia. And uh, together, those uh, stations will give us the uh, second stage burn and the third stage burn. And the spacecraft separation will come through Tennant Creek and the Kwajalein Island station in the Pacific. This time, the vehicle is simply in a parking orbit and in a coast phase. The total duration of the coast is about 42 minutes. And at the time that we are lost our contact through the Antigua station, all of the data look, look good. Our next uh, event will be the reignition of the second stage, which occurs 55 minutes after launch, so that will be about to 7.29 this morning. And we should begin to get uh, some data ahead of that to indicate that uh, we have contact with the second stage and is beginning its reorientation for that burn between about 7.20 and 7.25 Eastern time this morning. At a mission after time of 30 minutes into the dawn mission, this is Delta Launch Control.
This is Delta Control, 47 minutes, 58 seconds into the flight of the Delta II with the Dawn spacecraft. The Delta II now is approaching the west coast of Australia, and we should shortly be getting contact through the Dongara tracking station, which is on the west coast of Africa. And it will be followed about five minutes after that by contact to the Tennant Creek Station in north central Australia. And that will be giving us our data on the second stage restart and the third stage burn before we get to spacecraft separation 62 minutes after launch. That will come both through Tennant Creek and the Kwajalein Atoll Reagan Test Range site in the uh, Marshall Islands in the Pacific. So we're going to stand by now to hear Mark Levine resume his coverage from the telemetry lab once we begin uh, to get data and begin to reorient the second stage for its burn. Once again, the official launch time this morning was 734.00 decibel 372. And so far, the uh, position of dawn on the Delta II is uh, exactly where on the trajectory it is supposed to be. And the uh, parking orbit is, is uh, nominal, so our next burn, followed by the third stage, will kick it out on a escape trajectory on its way past Mars and then in the... Uh, two asteroids, Vesta and Ceres. 50 minutes now into the flight, standing by for a resumption of telemetry data. This is Delta Launch Control. Flight commentary is back with live data over Australia. Our ullage jets did come on, and hydraulic pump has switched on. Our next event will be a restart. Ignition, we have second stage restart. Data quality looking very good over Dongara. All its jets did switch off, and our hydraulic system and return pressure still looking good. Just passing T plus 3130 seconds. Second stage ox and fuel flow rates looking good. Chamber pressure is solid. Second stage continues to perform well. We still uh, verify stable combustion. 
and our data quality is still looking good from Dongera. Uh, and the vehicle body rates are nominal. Uh, a little bit less than 50 seconds to go on this second stage burn. This is a long restart to raise the apogee. Data quality is still looking good, and the data levels are at the at the levels they should be. Close to the events. Seco. We've had Seco two. Looks to be a few seconds longer than nominal. And our hydraulic pump did switch off. Bleed down is complete. Rack's jet activity looks nominal. Our next event will be a third stage uh, spin rockets up and we should release our third stage any second now. We have spin up. And separation, third stage separation. Dennett Creek also now. Our next event will be a startup and ignition of the third stage, about 10 seconds from now. Also now giving us uh, data. Show good rates, a little bit of noise. We've switched tracking stations. Should be ignition. Yeah, we just switched to uh, Tenant Creek uh, tracking station uh, moments before ignition, and the data was cleaning up. But we show good chamber pressure on the third stage motor. T plus 3,390 seconds. Uh, less than 10 seconds, about 10 seconds, correction, on this third stage burn. Chamber pressure is still looking good. Starting to see uh, average levels of mutation as we approach burnout. Burnout. Chico. We uh, can confirm some NCS jet fires, and the mutation is being controlled.
data quality uh, still looking very clean from Tennant Creek over Australia. Third stage is just coasting along. It will continue for about another two minutes. And our nutation is holding steady at a low rate. And we'll have a look at the Seco 2 orbit now that we uh, there's a little bit of time. This was uh, after raising the apogee. And the numbers are, again, this is SECO 2, height of apogee, 3,681.8 miles, height of perigee, 95.29, and an inclination of 28.64. And that's, that's the last frame of data for the orbit before the third stage ignited and separated. And that means we've uh, we hit that target and we were pointing in the right direction when the third stage ignited. Showing a little bit of noise now on our third stage data, but it's cleaning back up. Kwajalein Island has acquired in the Pacific, the Marshall Islands. That's the Reagan test site. Reagan test site tracking the third stage through spacecraft separation. About uh, 90 seconds away from spacecraft set. Really not much to report. The third stage continues to coast along. Our next event on the third stage will be a D-spin weight deploy. And we are showing signs of a uh, degraded uh, TM reception. We're getting close to an LOS from Tennant Creek. We should be switching to Reagan test site uh, any time now. Uh, we're currently LOS from Tennant Creek. Thanks for the ride. And we have now acquired our signal over the Reagan Reagan test site over the Kwajalein Islands, and our data quality quality looks very good. Past T plus 3,700 seconds, we have D-spin weight and spacecraft separation. Showed a good D-spin uh, reaction and a very clean uh, separation signal. Don, you're on your way. Good luck. Well, we've had spacecraft separation, and Don is on its way to the Our asteroid next event belt. is back on the second stage. We'll be back on the second stage. Having our we'll NASA launch director Omar Baez come over and give us an out brief on how the countdown went this morning.
right now, Dawn is uh, almost 4,000 miles away from Earth. Traveling at over 25,000 miles an hour. And the uh, launch team here is uh, exchanging the congratulatory handshakes. And we don't expect to hear from Dawn as... Uh, as we heard from our uh, project manager, uh, Kier Patel, uh, for somewhere between uh, 90 minutes and two hours at least, and it'll be another two hours after that before we're able to have a state of health. So we will uh, provide a state of health uh, at the post-launch press conference, which is scheduled for 1 p.m. Eastern time today, when we will have the uh, spacecraft personnel, the uh, project manager, the uh, principal uh, investigator, and our program manager from NASA headquarters all there to uh, talk about the state of health of Dawn as it's relayed to us through the Goldstone tracking station in California, the uh, Deep Space Network. So uh, we're waiting uh, for Omar Baez to make his way through the uh, congratulatory crowd here in the Mission Director's Center. It uh, appears to have been, by uh, all accounts, so uh, we've been able to determine a, a very successful and happy launch this morning. And we see uh, Omar Baez uh, is uh, almost with us here momentarily. Sixty-six minutes, 45 seconds now into the Dawn mission with Dawn now on its way to the asteroid belt. And we're joined here at the console with uh, our NASA launch director, Omar Baez, who uh, will give us a brief uh, recap on how the countdown went this morning. Uh, I, I guess we went into it a little bit uh, concerned about the weather, but I guess that didn't really pan out uh, to be too much of a concern, did it? We were expecting it to um, get a little bit worse than that and get some of those showers over the pad, but uh, Mother Nature uh, worked with us and uh, kept it down towards uh, Patrick. It's about as close as it got to it, so um, uh, the weather cooperated. Um, a really quiet count and uh, had no excitement up until the end uh, when we had a, a ship out in the uh, drop zone for the uh, solid motors, and uh, we held and retargeted the uh, middle of the window, um, worked through uh, all the resets to get there, and uh, And, and what was our, uh, uh, what, what affected the uh, 
the closure, the you know, collision avoidance. Uh. Well, we had the International Space Station cutting out uh, a couple of minutes of our window. Um, I don't have it. It was from um, 7:27 to about uh, 7:33, um, where the uh, we had a conjunction with the International Space Station. So. Um, we were s still targeting the middle of the window, which was outside of that range, so it, it, that really didn't affect us much. And uh, I, I guess what's uh, a, a little bit interesting is in the countdown dress rehearsal, we actually practiced how we would manage a boat coming into the area. That's why we do these these simulations, I guess. That's why we do these simulations, so that we're uh, cool and collective and able to react on the fly. So uh, what uh, so far can we say about the... Uh, trajectory of the spacecraft in terms of how the Delta II performed and uh, where it put the, it in terms of its uh, mark. The Delta II Heavy has uh, performed well. Um, we're uh, exactly where we want to be. The first stage, the second stage, and the third stage uh, were all nominal, nothing funny in the data uh, so far. And uh, from what we see in the orbits, uh, we're right on the money. And uh, just waiting for the uh, spacecraft to get over uh, their uh, DSN stations and make sure they're doing all right. Well, we have, uh, interestingly, another Delta II Heavy as our next launch coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? That will be glassed, and that uh, should be the first quarter-ish of uh, next year, and uh, will be from the uh, same pad here, uh, 17B, and that will be a Goddard Space Flight Center uh, mission. Well, Omar, thanks very much, and uh, congratulations, and we'll look uh, to being back here again uh, early next year. Thank you, George. Thanks a lot. That uh, will conclude our coverage now of the, uh, of the Dawn mission. As we said, there will be a post-launch press conference to give us the Dawn state of health at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And at this time, we are uh, awaiting contact with Dawn through the uh, Goldstone tracking station in California, which uh, will come somewhere between 90 minutes and two hours after launch. This concludes our launch coverage for Dawn. At 70 minutes, 40 seconds into the mission of the Dawn spacecraft, this is Delta Launch Control.